All right, if you've ever spent any time fishing, you're already familiar with this phenomenon. Um, so suppose you're looking from the air into a, a pool of water at a fish under the surface. Now, you think you know where that fish is. So if you were going to throw in a hook in front of its nose and attempt to, um, to entice it to take your worm, where would you put that hook? Or if you were going to try to stick it with a spear and catch it that way, where do you aim the tip of your spear? Well, it's not as simple as you think because that fish is actually not where you think it is. So what you see here is the eye to represent your eye and a fish. In the, the fish at the moment is in its actual position. Okay, so the fish is, the fish actually is where the diagram says that it is. However, uh, rays of light are leaving this fish from all over. An infinite number of rays are leaving this fish from all over its body. I'm, I've shown two of them to keep it simple. All right, so those rays of light leave the fish and they shine upward toward the surface of the water. When they get to the surface, those rays have to bend because the rays will be passing from the water, which is quite a slow medium like glasses, into the air, which is a much faster medium. So at the surface of the water, we have a normal line. Now, if refraction did not occur, of course, that incident ray would continue right on past. Okay, however, it does bend just a little bit uh, away from the normal and in toward your eye. So this is how you're managing to see the fish, okay? If the, that incident ray had continued on in its original direction, unbent, unrefracted, it wouldn't have reached your eye in order to allow you to form an image of the fish. So the image that you see is um, because that light has refracted away from the normal as it's leaving the water. And of course, the same thing, um, and of course, as we've discussed already in class, your brain thinks that light cannot refract. It thinks it had to have come in a straight line. So casting that ray that you receive, the emergent ray that arrives at your eye, casting that back into the water, we find that our fish is um, shifted to one side, and in this case, actually, a little bit shallower as well, a little bit toward the surface of the water. Same thing's happening with the other incident ray. So when it reaches the, um, the surface of the water, um, it could continue unbent, but of course it doesn't because light as it travels from the water to the air will bend a little bit. And it, once again, it will bend away from the normal and into your eye like this. But as before, your brain thinks that that light must have traveled in a straight line. Where those two straight lines meet is, is the, um, the image that your brain forms of the tip of the fish's nose. So your brain thinks that the fish is in fact right over there. So if you were to aim your spear or your hook at the fish that you see, your uh, fish would be, um, you would be aiming too far to the side and probably aiming a little bit too shallow. And so the, the fish does not, the image of the fish does not appear where the fish actually is. It's distorted to one side. All right, we are going to perform a little activity where I'm going to put um, a coin in a cup. And then we're going to put that coin um, and the cup just out of your view so that you cannot see the coin in the bottom of the cup. And we're going to add a little bit of water. All right, so as you see, without any water, in the cup, you cannot see the coin. But we're going to slowly add water until you do. Okay, now why has adding water suddenly brought that coin into view even though we haven't moved it? Well, the answer is refraction. So once again, as the light uh, moved from the slower medium of the water to the faster medium of the air, 
it bent away from the normal a little bit and into your eye, allowing you to form an image of the coin. But you're not seeing the coin where it actually is. You're seeing the coin shifted to the side just a little bit. So you're forming an image of the coin, but you're not seeing the real coin. You're only seeing an image of it. All right. And that's how uh, depth illusions occur as light moves from water to air.